Kraft presents The Great Gildersleeve. The Kraft Cheese Company, who also bring you Bing Crosby every Thursday night, present each week at this time Harold Perry as The Great Gildersleeve, written by John Wheaton. from the great Gildersleeve in just a moment. Well, popcorn days are here again. And if everybody in your family likes popcorn as much as I do, you don't want to miss this bet. The next time you pop up a big crispy bowl full, do this to make it extra good. Drench it with plenty of melted parquet margarine. Yes, parquet margarine, Kraft's delicious spread for bread. Parquet makes popcorn extra tempting because it's so thrifty you can use all you want. And good... Oh, say, you'll relish that delicate parquet margarine flavor. It's as delicious melted over popcorn as it is spread on bread or rolls. And remember this, parquet margarine is wonderfully nourishing. It's an excellent source of food energy. And every pound contains 9,000 units of important vitamin A. So for table use, yes, and for baking and pan frying, too, remember delicious economical parquet margarine. Now, at the top of tomorrow's shopping list... Write down Parquet, P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet, the margarine that's made by Kraft. Now, on with the show. As it must to all men, the first of the month came last week to Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, and with it, Bill's. For five days, they've lain unopened on the desk in his den. But this morning, we find him shuffling through them for a hasty glance at the bad news before rushing off to the office. Uh, Bills, bills, bills. Look at them. Phone company. A lot of calls we didn't even make. Summerfield Light and Power. Ooh, the robbers. <laughs> Peavy's Drugstore. Soda's 45 cents. Leroy! Nobody left for school, Uncle Moore. It's lucky for him. When he comes home, you tell him I want to see him, Marjorie. Yes, Uncle Moore. Bill's. Bill from Dr. Pettibone. Well, he didn't lose any time. <laughs> Hogan Brothers after me again. Oh, we got to quit buying all this stuff we don't need. It's unpatriotic. A1 Grocery. Ooh, I wonder how we came out on that. <laughs> Oh, I won't pay it. Bertie, Marjorie. What is it, Uncle Moore? Bertie. I'm coming. What's the trouble? Bertie, what did I tell you last month? Tell me? Yes. Last month? Yes. Me? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that grocery bill, Bertie. Eight dollars more than the last. Well, that's the way it is, Mr. Gilsey. I know, but why is it? I thought we agreed to hold the grocery bill down, Bertie. Yes, and we agreed, but the A1 grocery didn't. <laughs> you have to realize, Uncle Mort, that prices have gone up. They're going up every month. Yeah, you take eggs. I remember when you could buy eggs for 39 cents a dozen. Now they're getting so the hens won't even do nothing unless they cough them up. Yes, what? <laughs> yes, well, we've simply got to cut down somehow, Bertie. Because if we don't, we won't be able to buy our war bonds. Do you want that to happen? No, of course not. Bertie, do you? Not me. Got to get them war bonds to keep Hitler from getting up. That's right. Takes bonds and taxes to beat the Axis. You're right, Bertie. <laughs> Got to give up our earnings to lick the Germans. Absolutely. Got to pour in the dollars till Hitler holler. And whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You've got the right idea, Bertie. But we can't do all that if we don't save our money and cut down our expenses. Yes, but how? Oh, I'll tell you how we can cut them down. Yeah, how, Bertie? I'll take that leftover veal we had last night and make stuffed peppers. You can stuff a pepper with almost anything. So I've discovered around here. (laughs) thing like that can be carried too far, though, Bertie. Now, Uncle Mort, if we're going to cut down, you're going to have to make sacrifices at the dinner table. Yeah, but you've got to think about morale, too, my dear. (laughs) Morale is very important. I don't know of anything worse for the morale than a stuffed pepper. (laughs) Well, now, I wouldn't say that. As a matter of fact, Bertie, I was thinking of cutting down in other ways, too. I thought one way I could cut down would be to take my lunch to the office every day and eat it at my desk, like Donald Nelson. (laughs) (laughs) Could you take care of that, Bertie? Oh, sure I could. What does Mr. Nelson eat? Well, I imagine he has sandwiches, two or three, or four or five. (laughs) 
Uh, cream cheese and jelly, probably, wouldn't you say, Marjorie? Oh, undoubtedly. And sardines. A fish, you know, is brain food. He's got all those priorities on his mind. <laughs> sardines we got. Yeah. Uh, and maybe a piece of pie to keep up his energy. He has to handle all those people. And anything else you think would be nice. How about some pickles? Oh, Nelson is very fond of pickles. He'd have to be to take on that job. <laughs> well, I'll go make lunch right away. Uh, you know, Marjorie, I've been thinking. There's another way we could save money. What's that? If we stayed at home more in the evenings. You know, people burn up their tires and their money running around looking for a good time when they can have a better time at home. How? Well, the way people used to in the old days. You won't believe this, my dear, but I can remember spending whole evenings at home. Doing what? I'm willing to stay at home if I have to. We had fun. Sometimes we'd sit in front of the fire while Papa read aloud to us from a good book. Oh. Or we'd pop corn, maybe, or play parcheesi. Sometimes we'd gather around the piano and sing. We had fun, my dear, and we didn't have to keep putting nickels in the piano either. Well, I, I love to sing. Everybody does. People ought to do more things like that. Oh, my goodness, I'm late. i got to get out of the waterworks. Hey, Bertie, where's that lunch? I ain't finished it yet, Miss Gillsleeve. Well, bring me what you've got. i got to go. That's what this country needs, my dear. More quiet evenings at home. We'll have to try it sometime. Yeah, stay at home. Save money. Save tires. Keep out of trouble. Strengthen family ties. We'll do it tonight. Uh, no, tomorrow night. What a day, what a day. Nothing like a brisk walk in the sunshine. Oh, here comes old Sawbones. Uh, hello, Dr. Pettibone. Hello there, Gildersleeve. My, you're looking fit. Fit as a fiddle and ready for love. Glad to see you followed my instructions. Your instructions? I threw them right out of the window the minute you left. I never felt better in my life. It won't last. I'll tell you a secret, Doc. I just learned how to live. Yeah, how's that? Cut down. Stop running around nights. Stay at home. Most wonderful feeling in the world. Build a nice crackling fire and spend the evening in front of it with the kids around, telling stories, playing games, singing, laughing, and along toward the end of the evening, a little snack of some kind. Oh, it's wonderful. You make it sound mighty attractive. How long have you been doing this? We're starting tomorrow night. <laughs> I'll be seeing you, Doc. Hey, Commissioner. Oh, good morning, Judge. How are things at the waterworks? I'm just on my way down to find out. Fine day, isn't it? Yeah. Why so cheery, Gildy? Well, I'll tell you, Horace. For the first time in months, I'm at peace with my conscience. How did you ever manage to square that? <laughs> <laughs> We've decided to cut down over at our house and put every spare nickel into war bonds. How are you getting down? Well, from now on, no more going out nights. For instance, tomorrow night, Marjorie and Leroy and I are just going to build us a nice cozy fire and spend the entire evening popping corn and roasting chestnuts. Chestnuts. I haven't roasted chestnuts since I was a kid. Sure. People forget about those things. We'll have some donuts, probably, and cider. I love it. And we'll play games and sing songs while you're down at that lodge meeting paying out your dues. <laughs> For what? The whole evening won't cost us a penny. I envy you, Gildy. I really do. Well, think it over, Judge. I think I've got something there. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Uh, hello, PB. I'm in a hurry. I just dropped in to say I got your bill this morning. And hereafter, if Leroy comes in here and tries to charge anything, don't let him have it. Well, just as you say, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> If he gives you an argument, tell him from now on he's frozen. Very well. <laughs> While I'm here, you might as well let me have a couple of cigars. Oh, oh certainly. Uh, did you say only two, Mr. Gildersleeve? Uh, yes. I'm trying to cut down expenses. You ought to cut down two, Peavy. Well, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> Everybody should. Save your money and put it in war bonds. You know a good way to save money? What's that? Stay at home nights. You do too much running around, Peavy. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> we all do. It's a fact. I'll admit I enjoy a good motion picture now and then. So does Mrs. Peavy. And for a while there, we did go several times a year. <laughs> but after Ruth Chatterton retired from the films, we slowed down again. Uh, my goodness, look at the time. I can't stay here arguing with you. I've got to get down to the waterworks. 
You? My cigars. Oh, yes. Uh, shall I wrap them for you? Uh, no, no, no. I'll just stick them in my pocket. I've got a rush. Well, I'd be glad to wrap them for you, Mr. Gildersleeve. Never mind. I'm always glad to wrap any purchase, however small. Oh, Peavy, give me those cigars. <laughs> Good morning, Miss Fitch. How are we this morning? I'd say we were a little late, Commissioner. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I try not to make a practice of this. Well, let's get down to business. Yes. Have you got anything to report? Well, I know. Everything's going all right. Is the water flowing nicely? All the mains in good condition? <laughs> Pressure satisfactory? Yes. Well, I guess that takes care of the waterworks. <laughs> oh, any money coming in? Yes, collections are just about as usual. Good. Glad to see everything running smoothly. Uh, Miss Fitch, I wonder if I could ask you to do a few things for me. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. If you're not too busy, I wonder if you'd go out sometime today and buy me a Parcheesi board. A Parcheesi board? Uh-huh. I don't know what you have in mind, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I do not play Parcheesi. <laughs> oh, no, I wasn't going to play it here, you know. Dear me, no. Perhaps I ought to explain. I think you might. Well, as you know, I have a niece and nephew living with me, and I decided I ought to do a few things to, well, make home more attractive to them and... Uh, Keep them out of pool rooms. Yes, and... And juke joints. <laughs> and you think Parcheesi is going to do that? Well, I thought of some other things, too. I made up a little list of things on the way down to the office. Yes. You might take this down. At first, a, a corn popper. A corn popper. That's for popping corn. I guess that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some popcorn. That's for the corn popper. Yeah, you guessed that too, didn't you? <laughs> uh, and I must order some firewood. You can't pop corn without fire. <laughs> uh, we better get some cider. Uh, popcorn makes you awfully thirsty, you know. And some donuts to go with the cider. Did you think of anything else? Bicarbonate to go with the donut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very good. <laughs> uh, I was going to get some games. We've got the Parcheesi. Uh, you'll be wanting bean bags. Oh, I don't know. Do you think they like bean bags? If they like Parcheesi, they'll like bean bags. <laughs> I think we might pass up the bean bags. <laughs> How about dogs? Darts? Not with Leroy. He got some darts last Christmas and I couldn't sit down until New Year's. <laughs> There'll be no darts. Oh, the piano. I forgot the piano. Piano? Uh, Miss Fitz, do you play the piano? Well, um, I uh, once learned McDowell to a wild rose. <laughs> Get your hat quickly. You've got to come out and help me buy a piano. Uh, just a minute, Mr. Gildersleeve. Do you mind if I ask you something? Oh, of course not. Have you the slightest idea what you're doing? Yes, 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 certainly. I told the children they could spend a quiet evening at home tomorrow and like it. And by George, they're going to like it. I've got to put this over, Miss Fitch. I'm going to make it the darndest, quietest evening you ever saw. Let's go buy a piano. <laughs> the great Gildersleeve will be with us again in a few seconds. But first, I'm sure you wise homemakers don't just shop for food these days. You shop for good nutrition for your families. And that's why you all should know about parquet margarine, the delicious spread for bread that's an economical source of important food elements. First, parquet margarine is one of the best energy foods you can serve. Now, that's important. We're all working harder these days, and we need plenty of wholesome energy food. Second, parquet margarine is a reliable, year-round source of vitamin A. Now, that's important, too, because vitamin A is one of the essential vitamins. And best of all, parquet margarine helps provide these necessary food elements, not just once a day, but three times a day. Parquet tastes so good, you'll want to serve it as a spread at all your meals. You'll want to use delicious parquet margarine in your baking and pan frying, too. So, for all these reasons, ask your food dealer tomorrow for parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine made by Kraft. Now let's get back to Summerfield and see how the great Gildersleeve's quiet evening at home is working out. There's a pleasant fire roaring in the grate. Aesop the cat is curled up asleep on the hearth, and Gildersleeve is about to try an experiment on his nephew. Well, Leroy, this is what I call living. You do? Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> Here we are, snug as a bug in a rug, no cover charge, no traffic jams, and I'm about to read you one of the greatest books ever written. 
A classic by Sir Walter Scott. What's the name of it? Ivanhoe. Never heard of it. Well, it's a great story. If you've never heard of it, you should be ashamed of yourself. Oh, yeah? If it's so good, how come they haven't made it into a picture? Yes, yes. I dare say they have, and they probably will again. But I'm going to read you the book. Oh, gosh. Oh, can't I wait and see the picture? You'll spoil it for me. Spoil nothing. <laughs> you hear a great masterpiece, just the way it was written. And you thank me for it someday. Now listen. Okay. Let's see here. Find the beginning. Oh, here. Ivanhoe, Chapter 1. In that pleasant district of Merry England, which is watered by the River Don, there extended in ancient times a large forest covering the greater part of the beautiful hills and valleys which lie between Sheffield and the pleasant town of Doncaster. Are you kidding? <laughs> Leroy! Uh, the remains of this extensive wood are still to be seen at the noble seats of Wentworth, Warncliffe Park, and around Rotterham. Why, Uncle Mord, reading aloud. What a wonderful idea. Oh, you think so, my dear? Yes. May I listen? Of course. Sit down here by the fire. Hmm. I'll start over so you won't miss any of the story. Oh, gosh, Uncle, have I got to hear all that again? <laughs> Two sentences, Leroy. You can stand it very easily. Of course you can. What's the book, Uncle Mord? Ivanhoe. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> what do you mean by that, my dear? Nothing. Just... Oh. You must have meant something. I know. You keep out of this. <laughs> have you ever read Ivanhoe, Marjorie? Well, I tried to read it, Uncle Mort. I tried when I was in high school. You tried? That's ridiculous. Once you get into it, you'll be on pins and needles. But, Unc... Leroy, you listen to it whether Marjorie does or not. And if Marjorie has any regard for my wishes, she'll listen too. Now... Go ahead, Uncle Mort. Good. In that pleasant district of Merry England, which is watered by the River Don. Eumaeus strode hastily down the forest glade, driving before him, with the assistance of fangs, the whole herd of his inharmonious charge. Well, yeah, that's the end of the first chapter. First chapter? It should be the end of the book. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Shall we have another one, children? It gets even better as it goes on. Um, let's save it, shall we, Uncle Moore? Yeah, so we'll have something to look forward to. <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's nearly 8.30, and I just remembered I have sort of a tentative date with Doug. Uh, but Marjorie... It's nothing definite. He just said if I wasn't doing anything. <laughs> but do you call this not doing anything? We don't have to read if you don't want to. I, I, I brought all these little games. Well, if you're going to feel badly about it, I won't go. Well, gee, I don't like to insist, but I thought we agreed we'd all stay in tonight and just have a quiet evening at home. I know. Maybe Marge could ask them to come over and I could ask Piggy Banks. You don't think it would work with just the three of us, huh? And I thought it would be nice if we didn't have anybody in but just, you know, spent the evening together. Well, Uncle Mort, if that's what you want, that's what we'll do. What will we, Leroy? Okay, sure. Well, I don't want to force you. No, I think it'd be nice. <laughs> I think it'd be fun. Oh, Marjorie, you're a sweet girl. How about me? Aren't I sweet, too, Uncle? Yes. <laughs> you're sweet, too, my boy. Come on, let's give it a trial, shall we? You can't tell. You might even have a good time. Uh, Leroy, you get off the Parcheesi board. Uh-oh. Who's that? Oh, Bertie's out. I'll go, Uncle Mort. Yeah. Hello, Marjorie, honey. Oh, hello, Mrs. Ransom. Won't you come in? Well. Well. <laughs> I can't stay but a second, but your uncle said I must drop over and see the new piano. Hello, Trock Martin. Uh, hello, Leela. <laughs> hey, glad you came. Uh, Leroy, take Mrs. Ransom's coat. Oh, I can't stay but a second. Oh. Uh, just throw it anywhere. Your uncle told me about the wonderful evening he had planned for you. I'll bet y'all are having more fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, where is the piano? A piano? Uh, right in here in the living room. <laughs> Must I close my eyes? Well, if you'd like to. There. Now you can look. Oh, I think it's just lovely. It's a Wembley. <laughs> I declare it just makes my fingers itch. Oh, well, try it. Go ahead. May I? Yeah, you'd never know it was second-hand, would you? <laughs> uh, play something, Leela. Oh, I could. Oh, yes, please do. Well, I'm terribly out of practice. We'll never know. Go ahead, play something. Well, I'll tell you. 
I'll play Throck Norton if you sing. Oh, I can't sing. Please. Sure you can, Uncle Mort. Pretty please. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Uh... Why do you want me to... Well, what do you want to play? Well, uh, what do you want to sing? Does anybody mind if I go to the movies? Yes. <laughs> you stay right here, young man. <laughs> How about the road to Mandalay? No. No, I know a better one. Uh oh. Oh, why do you love me? Uh, Leroy! <laughs> yes, Uncle? Out in the kitchen, you'll find some donuts. Uh, suppose you go out and get them, huh? Donuts? Yeah, and some popcorn and the popper, and bring those. Okay, I'll... Well, shall we start over again? Uh, just a minute. Uh, Marjorie. Yes? Uh, suppose you go out and help Leroy, huh? <laughs> Would you mind? Of course not. Uh, good. <laughs> now. Why do I love you? Why do you love me? Why should there be two happy as we? Can you see the why or wherefore I should be the one you care for? I'm a lucky boy. You are lucky too. All our dreams of joy seem to come true. Maybe that's because you love me. Maybe that's why I love you. Answer that, Leroy. Why do I love you? Oh, why do you love me? Why should there be two happy as we? Hooker! Well, why should there be two? Why shouldn't there be three? <laughs> cool right ahead, it's beautiful. <laughs> Who let you in, you old buzzard? My, my young friend Leroy. Hello, Leela. Hello, Joe. Yeah. Well, now, I thought you were spending the evening alone, Gildy. I was till you butted in. I just this minute arrived, and I can't stay but a second. Oh, don't go on my account, please. There's always room for one more, isn't there, Gildy? Yeah, there always seems to be. I'm sorry, Well, thank you, Leroy. I'll take two. They're small. Uh, why beat around the bush? Take the whole platter. <laughs> well, that's generous of you, Gildy. I hope you don't mind my dropping in like this, but when I got to thinking about what you were doing over here, nice, quiet evening at home, it sounded so good to me I just couldn't stay away. Nice, quiet evening. Look at it. I talk myself into it, and I guess I've talked myself right out of it. <laughs> Everybody, uh, quiet, please. Now, quiet. Throck Martin has a poem. Oh, do let's hear your poem, Throcky. <laughs> yeah, well, I have to have a quiet. It's very dramatic. Shh. Uh, uh, uh. a balmy summer evening, and a goodly crowd was there, which well nigh filled Joe's bar room on the corner of the square. <laughs> <laughs> uh, answer that, somebody. Uh, Marjorie, will you? I've got it. Hello there, young fellow. Is your uncle at home? You know darn well I'm at home. <laughs> well, if it isn't Teddy Bone, come on in, Doc. Join the happy throng. <laughs> How are you? Yeah, Hello, I'm Judge. Not. Well, Mrs. Ransom. Yes, but I can't stay but a second. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeve. How are you? I'm slipping. <laughs> Just thought I'd drop in, see if you're taking care of yourself. Well, popcorn. Would you have some, Doctor? Thanks. Matter of fact, I didn't have anything to do this evening, Gildersleeve, so I decided I'd just combine business with a little pleasure. Fine. I suppose I'll get a bill for this. <laughs> Great kidder, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Great idea you've got here, Gildersleeve. I don't know why people go running around when they can spend an evening at home like this. <laughs> Mr. Gildersleeve was just about to do a recitation for us. Oh, good. Have you ever heard my imitation of Harry Lauder? A room. <laughs> 
Just a minute, Doctor. If you don't mind. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve first. Uh, now, quiet, everybody. Uh, uh, it was a balmy summer evening, and a goodly crowd was there. The crowd's getting bigger. <laughs> Come in, P.B. I hope I'm not intruding, Mr. Gilbert. Mrs. P.B. had to sit up with his big friend this evening, and I thought I'd... Never mind the uh, alibi, P.B. Come on in. Make yourself at home. You know everybody. Give the man some popcorn. Yeah, here we are. Leroy. Yes, Uncle? You better take your bicycle and go down and get some more donuts and some cider. Again? You'll have to. Here's some more money. Boy, this is going to break us. Uh, Why, please, everybody, I have an announcement. Why, Doc has an announcement. Uh, Mr. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, our popular singing water commissioner, will now give his famous recitation, The Pace on the Barroom Floor, uh, following which he will offer to wrestle any man in the crowd for $5. Uh, Come on, Gildersleeve. Come on. No, I don't want to do it now. Oh, come on, Gilbert. No, I'm all out of the mood. Oh, please, Throckmorton. I'm dying to know how it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> it was a balmy summer evening. All right, who is it now? The cops? <laughs> Miss Fitz, come in. Well, I, I didn't know you were giving a party, Mr. Gildersleeve. Neither did I. I worked late at the office, and I had to pass here on the way home. <laughs> Don't bother to explain, Miss Fitch. It's open house here. Liberty Hall. <laughs> come on, come on. Give Miss Fitch a donut, somebody. Oh, folks, I got a suggestion. The judge has a suggestion. I think we all vote a thanks to our friend Gildersleeve here for a great idea. Why don't we meet together this way every Saturday night? Great idea. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not my idea. After all, as Gildy says, why spend your money when you can stay at home and have an evening and fun and jolly like this, and it doesn't cost a penny? Doesn't cost who a penny? Piano, popcorn, parts easy, eight dozen donuts. What do you say, folks? Next week, same time, same place. Just a minute, Hooker. Yes, Gildy. I've got something to say to all of you. You've invited yourselves in here, you've eaten my donuts, you've drunk my cider, and you sat by my fire and played my piano. And now, by George, you're going to listen to me. All right, Gildy. What is it, old man? It was a balmy summer evening and a goodly crowd was there. Well, folks, I muffed it again. I was trying to do the right thing, but I let it run away with me. It's a good idea to stay home, I guess, but I didn't have to go out and buy all that stuff. That's what makes inflation. We all know that. People are making more money today than they've ever made, and there are fewer things to buy it with. If we all rush down to the store with our money in our hand and start bidding against each other for the few things left on that counter, prices will go zooming up. We've seen that happening already. That's why they're urging us now not to buy anything we don't absolutely need, but to make our old things do. If there's money burning a hole in your pocket, sock it away in war bonds and stamps. Well, I'm a fine one to be telling you this. Buying all that junk I did, I could kick myself. But I'll never do it again, folks. I swear I won't. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Original music heard on this program was composed and conducted by Billy Mills. This is Ken Carpenter speaking for the Kraft Cheese Company and inviting you to tune in again next week for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. If your family turns up its noses at leftovers, here's a tip. You can change leftover vegetables, chicken, or fish into taste-tempting treats with Pabstet and do it in a hurry, too. You see, Pabstead is the delicious golden cheese food that's just right for making cheese sauces that really make leftovers sing. Just melt Pabstead in a double boiler, stir in a little milk, and season. That's all you do for a scrumptious sauce that's full of rich cheese goodness. You like Pabstead, too, for sandwiches and snacks because it slices and spreads so easily. And remember, Pabstead is an excellent source of food energy. Milk protein, the milk minerals, calcium and phosphorus, vitamin A. Yes, and Pabstead is digestible, too. So keep Pabstead on hand. Your dealer has it in the handy round flat package. Yes, tomorrow, ask for Pabstead. P-A-B-S-T hyphen E-T-T. Pabstead, the delicious golden cheese food of a hundred different uses. This program reached you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. You
You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.